Good morning, friends and gamers on the interwebs. I'm Rachel Blasky. And I'm Julia Hearn. And this is episode four, four now of You're Invited. And in this episode, Julie, VP and CEO of, the COO of oh, probably Game. Like, I'm good. Well, whatever. <laughs> and me, I'm owner Paquetto. Let's just chat over a good cup of coffee. And mine, again, is extremely large because my kids kept me up way too much last night. And we're going to talk about tabletop industry news, a topic that we feel is important when you are learning to run a board game publishing company. And all the while, we're going to discuss your comments and questions in the live chat because you're invited. And today's show is brought to you, new month, new sponsor. Today's show is brought to you by Arcane Wonders and their game, Hello Neighbor, the Secret Neighbor party game based on the hit video game, Secret Neighbor, is available starting October 7th. So I'm pretty excited about that. I and am, have play tested it quite a bit, so I'm excited that it's coming out. Excellent. And uh, we had an idea because we're still working on our YouTube subscribers. And uh, I have the YouTube link in the description box, but I could probably throw that in there also into the into the chat. But what um, what we would like to do is have you guys run over there, sub, and we are going to up the ante and going to talk about adding a game in addition to a tasty, tasty bag of caffeinated cobalt coffee. And apparently I can't talk. Okay, I'll take over. So we talked about what game we were going to give away. So we're already doing another giveaway separately uh, for Ninja Dice and I've got some other Greenbrier games, but we actually, this is a little shout out to somebody who's been watching every week, um, yes. but of love. So we're going to give away a copy of Cinder, which is Smirk and Laughter, Smirk and Dagger. Kurt is uh, his one of his games. Now it just came out of was uh, funded. It was funded on Kickstarter uh, this past winter, and all the Kickstarter backers are getting their copies. Uh, my household loves it so much that we independently both got a copy. <laughs> So we have an extra. So the giveaway, we're going to add that you're going to get a cup, you're going to get a bag of cobalt, caffeinated cobalt coffee, and also the new party game Cinder, which I can personally test to. I adore. It's amazing. It's hilarious. So um, there we go. And isn't the, the, present, the, the precedent for it is, or the theme is that you are a dragon on Tinder looking. Well, you me. are, no, you right? are a, not, you are a, um, either a, a troll or a fairy or an elf and you're looking for love in all the large scaly winged places <laughs> i love it well and done, you Kurt. need to you either you know you get your series of cards laid out and you either swipe right or swipe left and you know if you swipe right you get the the card and you try to go for coffee which is a little bit lower risk, lower reward. You might find love. You might get burned. <laughs> then if you want to push your luck, you can go out for dinner and that, or actually I think it's a lunch date. And then if you really want to shoot the moon, you go for a dinner date. And I'm going to tell you it's hilarious because so you have the status effects of what can happen to you from the actual dragon, the modifiers from the location that you end up picking to go on your date. And the idea is that you're trying to get the most, find the most matchups, the meetups and love without getting burned. I love this game. <laughs> I need to play it. So I bad. got three very large alpha gamer men on the dice tower cruise to sit down and play with me. And I told them their wives would thank them. And they were so bemused by what was happening. <laughs> and they, but they stuck with it. They wanted to find love or they at least wanted to watch me laugh like a maniac while I was playing. I mean, I maybe know. when they got home, they would find love. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's our giveaway game. And awesome. of course, uh, I can talk to Arcane Wonders because I think that once it comes out, 
uh, Secret Neighbor would be a really nice giveaway as well in the future. So let's hope that they're good to us and allow that to happen maybe in a future week. And I could talk about how much I love Hello Neighbor, Secret the mm-hmm. Secret Neighbor Party Game later. Uh, so this week in the industry, we've got week some in the news. Industry. So this is going to be a strange one, friends. Uh, Our news this week is me. And by me, I mean my company. And by my company, I mean Folklore the Affliction, the latest printing with our new Kickstarter that I was so excited came out three months early, is filled with mold. So this is kind of a weird one because I'm the news. So I'm going to have Rachel kind of help me along and do the uh, questioning. So, so broken. Um, this for you, I'm but. not happy. And part of the reason I'm the news is because I've been so, spending so much time dealing with it. I didn't have time to actually go out and read a lot of what I usually do to find the news. And so to me, it's a pretty big deal. To other people, it might not be anything. But at least I feel like maybe it can give you some tips about what to do and what not to do when this situation happens to you. Yes, because so usually we sweep this under the rug. So let's let's. Take this out because you're amazing and willing and to put yourself out there. So what happened? All right. So, <laughs> well, what happened was a game was made and manufactured by a manufacturer that we trust and respect and have worked with for years uh, in China. However, from the amount of research we've done at this point, it looks like uh, the chipboard materials that they the the vendor that sent sold them the chipboard materials that they purchased it from did not dry and treat the chipboard properly and then they made the games and then they did not test it properly so by the Mm. time it got here to the united states uh and our uh logistic partners are amazing and got the game out so quickly (laughs) Which we thought was so amazing until, so we got, uh, you know, a notification email. Hey, my game seems to have these spots. It looks like mildew or mold. I need a replacement. We said, sure, we can replace that. That's a bummer. And then a couple days later, we get another one. We're like, oh, that's not good. Maybe we should see if there was like a pocket. Maybe it was in transit, that particular box. And then suddenly it was dozens. So we started, you know, at this point... Fast forward a week and, you know, 500 more gray hairs. Mm. I have, we have, you know, sent it to be tested for what type of mold to make sure that it's non-toxic, which we're waiting on the results for. We have talked to the manufacturer and they are working with us for how, what level of, uh, of replacement will happen, but there will be at least some degree of replacing games. And uh, that's where we're at at this point. Well, I think that you've done the best you can to try and resolve it as much as you can. So, mm-hmm. but you also, I mean, we've talked about this in the past couple of weeks, you've got another Kickstarter coming. Right. And so it's so frustrating to see going from, you guys are amazing. You got us our game so quickly. You're the best to yeah, three what, is, months early. what is wrong with you? There must be some sort of conspiracy plot. There's no conspiracy plot. Uh, you know, and, but good or bad, like I've said, the manufacturer that we work with, we've worked with them on folklore for years. There have been eight years of us receiving folklore product with no major issues. You know, occasionally somebody's get a miniature with an arm that fell off that we have to replace. Nothing big. So, we appreciate that and are trying to work with them the best we can to make sure that this gets resolved. However, they're not our only manufacturer. Mm. Um, and we also work uh, with uh, Long Pack to do a lot of our other games simply because <clears throat> it takes so much time and focus for this company to focus on folklore. So uh, I will say that Lost Ones and uh, Tales of Barbaria is, have both are done are being done by long pack so it's a completely different manufacturer and i know publicity wise it's hard but i also you know i'm happy to say that at least for the time being for right now being able to say that a different manufacturer is handling it is good and we love long pack as well so what if i mean what if one of your backers was watching this and they want to know what to do with their game now that they've got it in their hand so while we were in the midst of it we're like we were saying please check 
because most people had opened it. We're at the point where we're saying, please, please don't open. If you haven't opened it, don't open it. Mm -hmm. It's there's clearly enough that it's widespread that it is very likely that as well, do not open it. We are looking to see how we can replace everything. We're working with the manufacturer. So it's not worth your safety. If you have asthma, if you you know have allergies, it's not worth it to open it. Just don't open it. Well, I mean, being Nebraskan, every time somebody says don't go outside because there's a tornado, I we all go outside. So I, I don't anticipate anybody listening to you. But Right. Well, well there's that. But there's also <laughs> the, uh, you know, I appreciate that you're waiting for our our guideline, but for your own safety, you have to you have to to know if I has asthma, I shouldn't risk that on myself. Uh, but if you need me to to tell you that you shouldn't be risking it, then I am telling you, please don't risk your thank, own safety. Thank you, Teacher Julie. Yes, right, you will be good. I, 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 literally, I like putting that much faith in our company is. Oh. Uh, terrifying. I, 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 the responsibility of having that, I, I, right. It's terrifying right. to me. Yes, absolutely. Don't open your box. Um, leave it closed really quick, because I think this is something that we should talk about too. Um, I'm going to pop this up here. Michael is asking what happened, um, on the QA side from the manufacturer. I don't know if that's anything that you know, or can speak to, but I don't that I, have only gotten that it was that they didn't handle it the way they realized it should have. Um, yeah. Now, like I said, eight years of manufacturing and never having this issue, I don't think they, I think they probably had guidelines in place that weren't requirements. Mm -hmm. um, and this time it should have been a requirement. Yeah. Um, I know that they are making adjustments on their end to prevent this from ever happening again on their end. Uh, so I, I, I you don't not think it was, well. no, we haven't slept well, but I also don't ever want to say that it was, I don't want to put it all on that. Like they are, they are accepting responsibility. They're trying to make it right. This is not something that is, I would ever have expected of them in the first place because they are a solid, dependable company we have worked with for almost a decade. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's, but yes, at some right. point there was, there was a dropping ball and they're, they're taking responsibility for that. And absolutely. Well, good. I'm glad that's, that's, you need, you need support in this kind of a situation because, I mean, so much of it is out of your control. So I really feel for you. Well, for me, I mean, as, as upsetting and stressful as looking at that widespread of something happening, to me, the more stressful thing is not being able to answer all the backers as quickly as they want to be answered. And I understand. I mm -hmm. do. I mm -hmm. would be very distraught if I thought that I was all excited to play my new game and I had been yeah. looking forward to it. And it's part of something that I've played for a long time now. And like we built a sense of community because it's a community and then to be let down because of that, it's upsetting. I'm upset. I'm upset for them. I'm upset for me, but I'm also upset for them, but I can't give more information than I actually have. I don't want to speculate because that's not fair. Right. Um, I don't want to give potential true answers. I want to give information when I know that it's a fact so that I'm not giving conjecture. It's, it's like even here, I'm leaning towards conjecture and I don't want to be doing that. I only right. want to give factual information so that I'm not saying something and then later on being like, just kidding. That's not what's going to happen. Well, and I applaud you because this could happen to any one of us. I mean, my mints could come completely covered in mold also. So like there's, or the tins could be rusted. There's always something that can happen. Mm -hmm. And we've talked in the past about the cost of freight insurance and things like that and how it's completely beyond uh, <laughs> fiscally, possible for things like that. So I, I, uh, feel for you and I, it so sounds like everything in the comments, uh, they're, they're understanding as well. 
So well, a lot of uh, and a lot of people watching are publishers, and I'm sure this is also your worst case scenario nightmare. Right. So my tip to you, from what I've learned from this, is for going forward, despite being assured that there will be uh, additional safeguards in place, mm -hmm. um, I know that from now on, when they tell me that manufacturing is done and everything is boxed and crated, I'm going to say, "Great! Now open the crate, pull out three random games." open them up while I'm on camera. We can, we're going to zoom this so that I can quality control inspect myself mm -hmm. right before it ships. Um, not, not, which we already, like we, we ask for while you're mass producing everything, do that and box, you know, after you've boxed it and shrink, send copies over while you're manufacturing. Those don't have mold. They didn't when we got it, and they still don't, which makes me wonder whether or not they were the same chipboard and they were made beforehand so they could sh show progress, mm -hmm. as opposed to saying, we're not done with the full box and we're working on this part of it, but we're still not done with this part of it, so you're going to have to wait a couple weeks. Right. Um, I don't think it was like, again, I don't think conspiracy or theory nefarious. I think they wanted to get something to us as quickly as possible so that we could do the turnaround. But it also means that I think that it might not have been the same chipboard. Yep. Well, Allison is right in your corner. I hate this for you. I appreciate all you're doing. I see so many other people. This sucks. I'm sorry. And, and conspiracy really, really, can we stop with all the conspiracies right now? Cause there's enough in, my Twitter feed that I don't need an extra one. So let's just actually believe that there was real people who really wanted to make the game and really are going to fix it now. So, yeah. mm. so that yeah. was the news. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was the news. How is everybody doing this? Everything morning? can only go uphill from here. <laughs> oh, heck yes. And I would just like to say we're, we're a little low on viewers this morning because I think, that you know it must have been a week for a lot of people and yeah. uh we have some really good stuff that i want to talk about this morning we're going to talk about beginner mistakes and i think we can learn a lot from that so yeah. if anybody wants to like go to the bottom where it says like share or whatever i don't know i have to pull up the thing it says uh, i don't know it says oh share. yeah it says share if anybody would be willing to share right now, it'd be super cool because I want more people to hear the really cool stuff that we're going to talk about this morning. Um, so let's see. Um, also, since a lot of you guys are recurring um, uh, viewers, you probably have done this already. But for those of us, those of you that are new, I'm going to tell you that if you click the three dots in the upper right hand corner. You can choose to be notified every time we go live. And we also dropped a link to the YouTube account in the comments earlier. Uh, and it's also in the description box if you want to subscribe and find our archived shows after streaming. Um, we've been trying to do little clips in our, in our Instagram stories and just kind of help everybody get the best of the best from what we are doing. And Julie and I had a powwow last night and we're like, I think I just said, um, 43 times in one minute. So we're going to try really hard to be good. <laughs> we're going to try. Full disclosure. So, uh, what do we have next? We're going to talk about our actual topic, I think. Ooh, so. so that is this. Where is it at? Beginner mistakes. We're going from experienced people still make mistakes to beginner mistakes. Yes. And and we asked a question this week, too. Um, and it was, what do you wish you would have known? Um, obviously, this is kind of coming from a perspective of a publisher. But, I mean, even getting into the industry, we have a lot of content creators in the, in the comments right now. Like designers, if, you know, as a designer. So many. What, there's what? a lot of different aspects and right. obviously 2020, not in the year way, but in the hindsight kind of way yes. <laughs> is, is kind of, is kind of tricky, but what do you wish it, somebody pulled you aside and been like, Hey, watch out for this, watch out for this, or Hey, this thing you're thinking is going to be a big deal. It's <laughs> quicksand, not. quicksand, yeah. not a big deal as an adult. 
Promise. Mm. <laughs> Love it. And Shark, sharks and pools. Not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a thing, kid. Right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I think that um, we could talk about uh, that and what we're trying to do. And starting next week, we're going to start posting this question on Mondays instead of Wednesdays so that we have more time to get more people involved and engaged so uh, we can give away stuff because we're really trying to give away stuff, guys. Don't you want our, don't you want games? <laughs> Be involved. Okay. All right. Cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch up so you can see our our up up front faces, and we will get to the meat of the topic. So first things first. Ah, <sighs> mm, you know what? <laughs> this is so hard. Because it's so hard to like say what you messed up or you wish you would have done better. But we well, want to do this for you. <laughs> right. But uh, well, I don't know if it's that hard. I know some of it is some of it's things that I did. A hundred percent. I will take ownership. We were also we are in that age where, you know, Kickstarter just started and so that rush and excitement of new Kickstarter covered a lot of our sins that won't now because people are more savvy. So mm -hmm. I, you know, me and Jeff and Zach were lucky that we had way more wiggle room to learn than other people. But there were other things that we did from the beginning that people don't consider that I appreciate having uh, Jeff and myself having a, well, Jeff more so than me, but me to a certain extent, having a corporate background and understanding of of how that works and applying some of those things to our business strategy before we started as a publisher. Absolutely. So I was going to start with, I, I think that when, one, one of the things that you really should do well at the beginning that a lot of people don't have this on their mind when they get started is really taking the time to organize your business structure because everybody comes and they're like, I want to make a game. So games are awesome. And I don't want to talk about business side because I'm a creative and this is super cool. There are very few of us that are business and creative at the same time. Julie is of course one of them and because she's like a unicorn, but uh <laughs> She's the unicorn. All right. Well, super when... feeling like a unicorn this week. Super feeling <laughs> it. <laughs> I know a lot of people who can't handle the business stuff. They would have just like went and hit under their bed. So props to you. Uh, thank you. So what you need to do is actually realize that what you're going to do is make a business because Kickstarter doesn't want to fund a bank account that is not a business account really. So like you've got, uh, you need to make sure that you are treating it like it needs to be. Burnout is a thing and we all know that. And I am here to tell you that when you try to do something that does not make your heart sing, it is not what your every day is that, that, feeds your soul. Like if you're a designer, you want to design and that <clears throat> makes you want to go to work every day or want to go to work every night. Cause you know that nobody is actually doing this full time and they just do it after work. So, um, you need to find what you're good at and maximize that. And then the things that you are not good at, you need to find help. You need to find someone that that makes their heart sing. I know somebody who <laughs> we made we made pokey cards yesterday, like custom ones, <laughs> for because my son wanted to make them, and we were talking about special special powers, like you know in Pokemon. <laughs> and I threw out a challenge to my friends to make one, and one of them made spreadsheets his <laughs> his special attack. Uh, and I'm like, that's because he loves spreadsheets. Like, I don't love spreadsheets. I mean, 
it kind of looks like I do because that's how I organize things. But I, if if they include formulas and things, no, <laughs> I don't. I don't like those kind. So find someone who does love spreadsheets and and enlist them in your cause and come up with an equitable arrangement. So, uh, so yeah. I'm gonna. So one of the things that um, I will say. So when you're in a massive corporation, if you're not good at something and you're not comfor comfortable with something, very often there is room to go learn for free. Mm -hmm. You have the ability to go take a training session, or you know, get a mentor, or so there's a built-in. This is uncomfortable, but this is uncomfortable maybe because I don't know about it and that and so doing direct application while I'm trying to also have the learning curve. Sometimes it's just not like your your jam. Um, spreadsheets were not my jam initially until I realized that it was just a really big euro. And then I became cool with them. But <laughs> but until Re then reframing. <laughs> right. But when you're in a smaller business, it's one, two, three, five people, which most, the very vast majority of board game companies are, mm -hmm. you don't always have those same um, at your fingertips tools, or you then have to also take the time not just to learn them, but to go find the ones that are free or find the ones that are free and reputable or find the ones that are reputable, but you have to pay for it. So you have to then factor in how it goes in your budget. And that's also another dream. Mm -hmm. So, it to your point, before you start the business, you might want to take a couple years just to do that piece of it. And that's the hard part because the fun bits are the making the game. Yeah, I want to make uh, the game. I don't want to do The fun bits are the, right, are not the, the homework it takes to do a business. But let me tell you, if you only, if you only focus on the fun bits... You're not going to be able to handle when the non-fun bits happen, and mm -hmm. and then you're and then you know people say, well, what went wrong? And you're like, I don't know, it just didn't work out. Well, that's what went wrong. You didn't think about the business aspect of it, and it is a business. Uh, from my whole adult life, has been working in areas that are providing fun and services in an, in a corporate kind of or in a but also the business aspect of it. So I was a stage manager for theaters. I was, <laughs> you know, and I, I've been a writer, but I've always been a writer in a much more corporate type of setting or at least business oriented. Uh, it's not, I'm writing the great American novel. It's, I need this kind of copy or I need this kind of flavor. Uh, it needs to be this many words. These are the names of the characters. The focus has to be A to B here, go. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. that's, I have always been a creative in a almost corporate or business kind of setting. And so you can do it, mm -hmm. but you have to prioritize. Um, my creativity has definitely like morphed as, as over the years, dependent on need. <laughs> I'm like, I can be really, really creative uh, about, you know, fun stuff around the house. And then all of a sudden I had kids that needed me to be creative and finding resources to support them. And so I just funneled that in. Just find a way to utilize your strengths and uh, run with it. So the next piece that I would say is if you're going to realize now that this is not just making a game, this is making a business, do it right from the beginning because it's going to save you a ton of headaches later. So get yourself a business. Yeah, let's, so what's your, your startup kit? Let's let's go through what is the startup kit of things, putting the fun thing aside, making the game. What is the startup kit of starting a business? Well, I would say start up with legal. You need to get yourself a business package where you're going to, and you can do that through a local lawyer. You can do that through lawyers online that I wouldn't necessarily recommend because they're not going to walk you through the process and there are things that could be missing. Um, but you need to decide, are you a sole proprietor? Are you an LLP, which is partners? Are you going to do LLC? Are you going to do an S corp? What are you, there are so many different structures and I put in a link, uh, to the description, um, to small business administration.gov. So that's, that's through, that is obviously a, 
uh, an American thing. So, I mean, if you're listening to this from offshore, <laughs> this is not something that's not something going to help you, but follow your laws and start it right. And then complete everything until you're through the whole packet. Some advice that I've given in the past is, yeah, you're going to want an actual lawyer and you might want to ask other people in the board game industry who they use to get specific because there are some specific people who do a lot of board game contracts. So good thing about that is that they're very knowledgeable. Hard thing about that is if there's ever a conflict of interest. Um, but what I've always said is the cost effective way if you're new is go and get your boilerplates online mm -hmm. pick the parts kind of go through and figure out which parts you think are going to be important to you and not circle them and then give so that you're taking less of your lawyer's time which means less money and saying i need these rewarded to say these things and give them a, a do their legwork for them and that way you've got an actual lawyer who's looked at it, but they're not doing it from scratch and taking all that time, which means more money for you. And never underestimate the generosity of our specific industry community. Because when I needed uh, ideas, I reached out and I said, hey, I don't need the specifics of your exact things that you've got going on. But if you have a boilerplate that I could build mine off of, I hate reinventing the wheel and I'm sure that I could learn something from you. And that was no problem getting some of those. So Fantastic. it was, it was just very encouraging. Um, so starting, a, starting off with making sure that you are, you have documentation. Uh, this is like, this is something we did. I, I'm very happy to say we er, decided early. So it's not just getting contracts for if you're hiring uh, freelance people to work for you. So artists, designers, um, graphic designers, marketing, if you're hiring all that out, all, all of those are going to require a contract, but among yourselves as a partnership or a corporation. And so many people say, well, we're just friends and we're making something creative and we don't <sighs> need that. And we, I, I'm so proud of us. We said we are friends and we want to stay friends. Yes. We've seen too, too many examples of, you know, bands breaking up, you know, breaking up the right. band because there were hard feelings. And if we put a document in place that expresses things clearly, we can be mad at that document. Right. Instead of at each other. Yeah. Uh, and, and then it's, what is the problem? Not what is the problem with you? Right. The problem exactly. is my job description. The problem is how I don't feel like I have enough responsibility or enough of a shit. Like it has, we're still friends and we're Beautiful. going, it's going to be, it's, this is, you know, we're going into our 10th year of doing this and we're still friends. We still hang out. We play video games online. Mm -hmm. We're friends. And part of that is whenever it gets not great, we don't turn on each other. Yes, we can because you took the time to have the uncomfortable conversations early on. That's right. And you are also paying attention to the fact that you are aligning responsibilities and uh, responsibilities and time and effort and money to the percentages of ownership in the business, because that can lead to, you know, feeling taken for granted or feeling like you're not getting what you're putting in and all of these things can sour a business. So, and also being open to the organic, what's the word I'm looking for? Like uh, the organic gr um, growth growth of the business over the years and how that will shift the percentages because we all have seasons in life that, you know, you can do more, you can do less. Your passion changes. You want to go into to, to a different area of the business or your expertise. You put more training into something and found out that it was what you loved. All your business partners have kids and you don't. Yeah. And, <laughs> and they're, but with that, they should be open to the fact that that is a limitation and you do need to be able to 
have more ownership for what you're doing and having the uncomfortable conversations. So that's, that's kind of my thought. And when you start out that way, you can have the forethought to plan to scale. Right. So, so far we've talked about, you know, working with your knowing long-term what your partners are going to behave, but let's talk about some external things that you should also do thinking about beforehand, specifically, um, okay, so you're made a game um, and it's, so <laughs> I was talking to Long Pack this week and Daniel Zayas about lost ones because we're ramping up and his, you know, comment of if I had a nickel for every time I had somebody come to me and say, well, I'm, I finished a game and it's ready and I'm ready to go and I'm prepared, but they hadn't picked out who they were manufacturing who was shipping it, who was, what distributors they were going to use or how they were going to get it to retailers after the fact. They had finished a design with art and graphic and had all the files ready for a game, but they hadn't complete, they weren't ready for the game to finish. So sure, those are the fun bits. <laughs> and they might be stressful and challenging, but they're puzzly and they're interesting and they're about your baby. So <laughs> Your baby has to, you know, go to college still. You got to pay tuition. You got to figure, you got to go look at the colleges in my metaphor. So you have to go talk to manufacturers. You have to go talk to different fulfillment companies of how you're going to get it. And not just fulfillment like to Kickstarter backers, but how are you getting it from the manufacturer to the boat? What boat? How, what boat is, you know, how many different ports? Uh, how many different boats to different ports are they going to? How are they getting from that boat to the next fulfillment place? And then how is it getting shipped to your backers? Who's handling that? Are you handling that? Is your fulfillment company handling that? Is your manufacturer handling that? Because any one of those three can be true. Or is another party altogether doing different segments? Did you hire some guy on a bike? like <laughs> <laughs> back and forth to the boat. That's I don't need the quote you, from this episode right now. What, what is your plan friends? And then <laughs> just because you had a successful Kickstarter, does not mean that retailers are automatically going to fall all over themselves to sell your game? Did you do anything to show, to, to do a litmus test of interest? Have you marketed it at all? Are you showing anything that's going to make sure that it's retailer friendly versus only a Kickstarter game? If it's only a Kickstarter game, how many backers did you have? And did you make sure that your manufacturing numbers reflect that it's only going to be a small amount of sales at conventions after? Or are you planning for it to be a mass market? And if it was a mass market, why was it on Kickstarter? Like these are things that people who haven't made a game yet haven't, thought of when they're like, I have completed a game and I am ready <laughs> because I asked them fire. <laughs> I need to like, <laughs> and I ask them in rapid down. fire and I get deer in the headlights and I'm like, you made a game. <laughs> you made That a is game. awesome. And that is an awesome thing to do because many people don't get even that far. What they get is I have an idea. If you've actually got the full game and you've played it, you've play tested it and it's cool and unique and it's something that you've created that's or even it's, it's terrible. That's amazing because you made it. And that's something that people, the exercise that people don't always go through. So regardless yes, of the level yes, of it, it, right. <laughs> how that, just because you're like, I have play tested it and it is complete and we have art assets and I know how it's going to look when it's in the shrink does not actually mean you are done. Mm. You are not even close to done. Um, and that, that is, terrifying for a lot of people but you need to think of those things and if you haven't then don't start advertising your game go find answers and when again when we started bless jeff's little thick-skinned heart because he was messaging people being like we made this game and we're thinking we might want like 500 copies manufactured do you do that and manufacturers wouldn't even respond because, and this was before we went to Kickstarter, mind you. This is when we thought 500 would be plenty. This would be like, you know, each of our families and friends would buy one and that would get us to about 300. And then we'd have 200 to maybe try to sell locally. Like, that's what we were thinking. That was our ambition um, before we hit Kickstarter and had several thousand backers. So the manufacturers weren't even responding to us. They were like, we don't even, but it didn't. Just, Jeff just would go to the next name on the list and the next until somebody finally said, Hey, kid, 
nobody talks to you until it's at least a thousand. And really at that point, it should be three that like really nobody talks to you until it's 3000. Come back to us when you get like more. And he's like, oh, well, could you at least give us a chart of like what the costs would be? Can you give me like a point of reference? <laughs> right. And like so many people would have been so disheartened by that. But he was just like, okay, that's new information. I've learned something. That's cool. What's mm -hmm. the next piece of information I can gather? You know, have a, yeah. have a good attitude about it. So he was hunting for a treasure in the one hand. He was hunting for buried treasure. Buried treasure being information about, please tell us how to be publishers. Um, but we did all of that well before we went to Kickstarter. So mm -hmm. a lot of people just go to Kickstarter. They oh. know Kickstarter. There's a lot of information about how to Kickstarter now out there. There's not as much information about how to manufacture and how to ship. Um, yes. And all of those people are in the Facebook groups asking after they've been on for about a week on Kickstarter saying, it's not working. What do I do? Let's back it up a bit and start doing our research. Yeah. Um, and then, so, so what you had yeah. the, yeah. I did my scale. I did, I did all mine. You were going to talk did. about a five oh. to 10 year plan. Right. So that's the other thing. If you've only got one game and know that, Oh, it's okay. Own it. If you're doing one game on Kickstarter because you had one vision and one dream, which by the way, was what we started and thought we were going to do and then finished it and then went, no, we actually like the publishing process more than we like the design process, mm. which was weird. Who yeah. knew? Most yeah. people are like, nah, we're good. This is evil. It's the devil. Um, we, <laughs> we liked it. We liked the charts and we liked the numbers and we like, uh, the problem solving of taking something from the beginning to the end, but also factoring in play testers and coordinating that. And we like it. I, I enjoy, I, as much as I've designed games, I liked developing games better. I like taking it from that 80% to finished and doing the fine tuning, polishing and thinking about how it's reflected in the art and theme. I like that. I like talking to artists and coordinating and, giving them deadlines and you know my little teacher carrot like you're doing such a great job i just need one more thing like i like all of it it's fine like Project those are things managing that... is your jam unicorn i do <laughs> um <laughs> so what what would you say is your top tip yeah that you are do Don't, this you can't prioritize just the fun stuff you you, you want to everybody wants to nobody doesn't that's why you know everybody wants dessert before they want dinner you have to do the hard work and the business aspect, if you're going to have a business and you have to plan for it, not just in the immediate, but what's your one, five, 10 year plan? Mm -hmm. Give me That's charts and graphs and be ready before you say I'm ready to go as a, as a publisher. I talked to a very wise publisher yesterday and he said, what's your exit plan? What does it look like to finish your company? What does it look like to, you know, what is the end game? And how and then work backwards how do you want that to do and nobody starts that way nobody starts that way and succeeds at, without going through all these other challenges so i would say mine was i said this a couple of times have the uncomfortable conversations because that sets your expectations that uh keeps you safe um, it sucks in the moment. You don't want to bring up stuff because these are your friends and you want to trust them and you, but life changes. And this isn't a huge, this is a huge commitment. Opening a business that has a undeter like indeterminate amount of time. Uh, yeah, that's where you need to, you need to suck it up, put on your big girl pants and talk it out. So I really, really hope that we, if you take anything from this, you take those things. Don't just live in the fun stuff. Realize there's other parts and then to have the uncomfortable conversations. And we've been having some rock star comments and I've been, as they were coming across, I was writing them down. I'm like, okay, go back to, let's say, okay. So, so uh, there's this gentleman that I, I may have met in the past, but his name's Justin Blasky. And uh, I hear he's nice, but uh, he's also watching this with us. And he says, I think the actual point when you cut and run is a very personal decision, mainly because we all break from different things in different ways. And that said, 
I think stepping back and appraising the situation with an outside observer that has some context will help you properly measure how close you are to the stopping point. And so maybe when you have those shareholder meetings each year or each quarter, having somebody that can look at the original arrangements and uh, have kind of a rundown of how things have gone. Maybe they can broach that topic for you. Like this sure, seems sorry. like this person. This goes back to my last year, last week's top tip of find your support system. Yes. <laughs> find your support it, system and your support system sometimes is. So my sister is phenomenal. I mean, so she's a vice president of ADP payroll. What I need to get an outside perspective of business I'm like, hey, this. And she's she laughs. She's like, this is amazing. This is great because it's not my problem, but it's a fun problem. Yes, exactly. Somebody else has ideas and neutrality. Yeah. And then Bree was saying that if you protecting your friendship is a reason for a contract, not to skip it. Exactly. That's exactly right. If you if you put the time into protecting your friendship, you'll keep it. So, uh, and Richard, what did you say? You can't rely on friends agreements in order to do business because someone always oversteps the mark and it's usually accidentally. And then you deal with hurt feelings and that just so many things, the communication breaks down and, uh, yes, what is your goal and better? What is your end game? So right. I love this. <laughs> yes. Mr. Recent retiree. What a great, <laughs> great I think you might've had that planned. Oh, so let's see. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and switch out our, our setup here mm -hmm. and bring us back here so that we can talk about what's going on with us this week. What is going on? What is going on this week? I mean, besides okay. what we've already talked about, what's going on this week? <laughs> right, right. Well, I'll go first. Uh, uh, for Paquetto. They are doing amazing things and they have a lot of things and not even like, so in the middle there, it says Mintworks Digital. That's actually not even Paquetto. They have, uh, we um, licensed with Unbox Games and they fulfilled Mintworks Digital this week. I think that in the uh, description box, I have the Android link to download. I have the um, iOS. I couldn't find the download for that, but it's just like go to the app store and search it. Uh, and then I think that there it's on Steam too. And this is so exciting to me. So I can play for, with my family and friends far away. And I'm just, I'm so pumped about that. I've played it and it's great. And I even played against myself because I'm one of the AI and it was very meta and I loved it. Um, Mint Cooperative is on a boat. Uh, on a boat. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> It is uh, supposed to be here soon. I'm really excited. This is one of the ones that I put the most work into. I cannot wait to see it. Um, and I cannot just, uh, it's just going to be everything to me when I can hold that in my hand. And hopefully everybody else will too, uh, will have it soon also. And then lastly, um, our marketing uh, uh, manager, Jojo, uh, she's an amazing illustrator and she made this super, super cool, uh, thumbnail here that has a, a little bit, a little smidge of each of the three games that are coming in the Paquetto collection. And it has the troll and it has like, uh, I think the dark one from Blessed Dark. And then you've got the goo from Starforge and I'm just so excited. It's going to be so good. All three games I'm so proud of and... I just can't wait to see it hit Kickstarter on October 15th. So that's what's going on in my world. And you got. So, it's not enough. Never, nothing ever enough. So talked about folklore and how we're resolving that. Talked about lost ones going to Kickstarter in two weeks. Also, we had a Kickstarter called Battle, Bar Barbarian Battlegrounds, Tales of Barbaria. And its pledge manager just went live. So I start a Kickstarter and then two days later, this will be starting manufacturing. So we've got a window to finish up this Kickstarter as well, because the fulfillment is happening in March and we are getting that going. So 
Craddox is handling our pledge manager for Barbarian Battlegrounds. Tales of Barbaria, if you miss the Kickstarter and want to get in on it, it's <laughs> I, I have no perspective pledge? I try to describe this game but this is one that I for the first time in a while this is one that I actually co-designed and I'm a little too close to it to be to have any kind of perspective it's cute it's stabby it's about a almost three weight but probably a two it has more of a euro feel than the original but you are a tribe of bears you're using your dice which are representative of your bears to roll and then you're using them and placing them on your village board to assign them to tasks they can go adventuring they can go brawling at other and you know raid other bears villages you can gather resources and then you're using all of those things to gain glory, which are your victory points, because you want to your songs to be sung in Bear Hala and be known as the toughest, <laughs> most vicious bears in all of uh, Barbaria. It's so vicious. Yeah. So pledge so managers remember, kids, now up. <laughs> when you think of Julie, think cute but stabby. Uh, literally, <laughs> that is, I feel like the two. Darker themed, narrative driven, and cute but stabby are our two lines of games. Also, two ways to describe me. I understand this. <laughs> oh, man. And then I am really excited about this shout out because this means a lot to me. Yeah. I live in Lincoln. I live about 45 minutes from Omaha. And so I've gotten a chance to get to know uh, our family that plays games, Mick and Starla. They have been really ex excited exciting to get to know and they are also super involved in afrocon omaha and afrocon omaha is another convention that's gone virtual uh this year it uh and it's been organized by jade rogers who chris goodlett in the comments he has done a great interview of her and it's her a fundraiser for the House of Afros Capes and Curls, which is a nonprofit org that is dedicated to promoting black nerd or blurred culture uh, in Omaha. And we want to signal boost them because it is happening Saturday, October 10th. Uh, they would love publisher support. And I know a lot of our audience is publishers or gamers that are more engaged. And uh, I'll say... A, t a large booth is a hundred dollars, <sighs> friends. It's a hundred dollars for a large booth. They have small, medium, and large. Yes. So it is not. They want it's not a drain. Virtual friends. booths. They want sponsorships, uh, and they and they only have like four sponsors. None of them are game oriented. Um, hey, hey, hey. Oh, did did you? One of them that? is game oriented. Boom! 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 <laughs> Uh, and game runners. I am going to be volunteering my time to run some, uh, games virtually. Uh, so this is a way that we as a community can support, uh, increasing accessibility to your products and celebrate diversity at your table at the same time, because we believe that black lives matter. So this is, this is our chance. I know it's short notice, October 10th, Saturday, um, a link is in the description box below. It's AfroConOmaha.com. I can tell you it's a super low, like very chill. You fill out like any other convention, the, the basics, and then they want you to send your assets and they do it all for you. Uh, for, at your booth, it's October 10th, noon to two. Uh, but in what, what time? It's not Central Mountain time? Central. Central, Central time. Central because they're here in Omaha. Okay, so... 12 to 2 is when you, the only time you have to be live at your booth, but you could also just provide video time, videos for them to replay during it if that's all you want to do. So you can either have live coverage or just a preset series of videos of all your products that they'll just play on a loop. It's super easy. Mm -hmm. I, I think that there is very little reason to not participate in this, especially because as publishers we usually can't go to the smaller regional con conventions because we just have so many um, commitments already. Except but, your own local ones, right? Right, of course. And so now you've got the virtual. I mean, this is the upside of virtual. You can be involved in things that that you typically wouldn't be able to because of logistical finance. And this is something we can do to help in our community. So um, 
I think. Uh, yeah. I loved it. Uh, this is a great idea. It's a great way to get your company name out there to underrepresented and undertapped demographics. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, that also this is an extremely valid con um, comment that uh, you're no longer a unicorn, but you're just cute, but stabby. But I think that Chris really nails that you're a cute and stabby unicorn. You guys are brutal. So normally at this segment, we would be talking about what we're going to be doing next week. But we did a cool little video for uh, Bits and Bobs on Girls Game Shelf. And so we're just going to show you the video because it's fantastic. And you can see us getting all ready and all spooky for Halloween. Here we go. Oh my goodness, it's so good to see you. I'm Wednesday Adams, <laughs> or Julia Hearn. <laughs> and I'm Rachel. <laughs> In case you didn't know, we're doing a new show called You're Invited. That's right. And one of the great things about having a support system in the publisher circle is that you can't, well, one of the great things is you can get dressed up and be silly with your friends. Um, <laughs> but great. another great thing is that we can share what we've learned uh, with each other as a resource. And we think that's really important to be able to share it with others. So one topic that we are going to cover is must have tools. So what do you think about that, Julie? I know you got a big old opinion. <laughs> I do. Um, so for us, and this is not for everyone I do know, but for us, a must have tool is a 3D printer because we make a lot of miniatures. And what we learned early on is um, when you send it for manufacturing, what, by the time you get to the approval process of something needing to be tweaked or changed or altered from China, you're not you're not getting to like make the changes. You can't just be like, you know what? Can you just uh, fix this a little bit? That ship is sailed. It's done. It's over. But if you're trying to get somebody to do a 3D print here in the United States, which is a much faster turnaround, it's really expensive. And if you're tweaking and you're tweaking and you're tweaking, each print is going to add up. So it's actually really a good investment if you're a miniatures type company to have a 3D printer. But if you're going to do it, you need to ask yourself a couple questions. First, have you done the research? Do you know what you want? Do you know how to use it? Two, are you a tinkerer? Because you're gonna tinker. You're just gonna, it's a thing that you're gonna do. Um, you're gonna have to. And uh, the other thing about it, the other pro, is that once you have a 3D printer and you're making these miniatures, it's not just shipping it for the manufacturing that you can use them for. You can use them like when you're sending something to media as a prototype, it's gonna have a much more of a wow factor when you actually have those miniatures. So some pros and cons, but I'm gonna stop now. I'm gonna let you add some things too. I mean, I am, I am on the show too. I mean, whenever you're done, but. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, miniatures. Mm -hmm. totally different for me. I, all of my stuff is miniature because it's all tiny because, you know, mint tins, a little, little. Uh, so we have much different needs yeah. than you. So we've got, let's see, color laser printer. Uh, we probably need a laminator. We've got shipping that we've got to do. So you've got your label printer, your scale, yeah. not to mention any software that you need to use on a daily basis. We've got some industry standards. So those are those are the things that we have for our go-tos. Absolutely. So as you can see, it's not a one size fits all kind of a thing. Um, but if you tune in on Friday mornings, 1030 Eastern Standard Time, you can hear more about this topic and others. So follow us on Facebook to learn more. And don't forget, you're invited. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. You can follow us on Facebook.
Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest. And links are all in the description box below. Enjoy your Friday or your Wednesday. And remember that next week, you're invited. You're invited.